Luis Gonzalez was born and raised in Tampa, Florida, where he was a standout baseball player at Thomas Jefferson High School. Upon graduating from there in 1985, Luis moved on to play collegiately at the University of South Alabama, where he earned Baseball America's All-Freshman Second Team Honors. In 1988, Gonzo was selected by the Houston Astros in the fourth round of the 1988 Amateur Draft. Left field, Gonzo back, Gonzo there! Holy Toledo, what a play! Luis spent four full seasons in Houston before being traded to the Chicago Cubs in June of 1995. There's a high fly ball way back near the wall. Whoa, who made the catch? Somebody did. He's done. After a season and a half in the Windy City, Gonzalez returned to Houston for a year and then went on to Detroit for the 1998 season, where he hit 23 home runs, which caught the attention of the Arizona Diamondbacks, who had just completed their first season. I remember conversations with Joe Gargiola, who was our GM. Uh, we had a list, short list of uh, outfielders that we might look at as a, uh, a fourth outfielder or third outfielder. And um, he wasn't on the list originally. And I remember saying to Joe, uh, what about Gonzalez? He had had a terrific year in Detroit, but what interested me was the dimensions of right field in Detroit were very similar to the dimensions here. We thought this was going to be a left-handed power bat. So he got back to me and he said, uh, there's a deal, you know, if we're willing to give up Kareem Garcia, we can get Gonzalez. And I said, well, that's great, except call them back and tell them we want $500,000 in addition to it. He said, are you sure? And I said, yes, call them, do the ask. So he did. He got back and he said, they said yes. I said, make the deal. In Gonzo's first year as a Diamondback, he had a career best 336 batting average with 26 home runs, 111 RBIs, and a National League leading 206 hits. Luis also had a 30 game hitting streak in an all star season as the team won 100 games and their first division title. He was a guy that was uh, extremely well liked by everybody throughout baseball. Uh, he was a very talented player, fit right into the middle of our order, and, and really, you know, uh, he kind of solidified the entire group of guys that we had. Luis was one of those players that, as an opposing player, you knew he was going to do something every time he stepped up to the plate. He was always a threat. Luis was also a threat out in the field. I don't think I've seen anybody since who could play the left field wall as well as he could play it. He was just uncanny. His ability to time his leap, hang on the wall. I don't know how many balls he brought back that would have been home runs. Gonzalez going back, 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 near the wall, jumps and he got it! Gonzo was a big hit in the clubhouse as well. Gonzo was a gamer. Uh, he was on the field every day. Uh, he was great in the clubhouse. He was a leader. Uh, he led by example. Uh, and guys followed him. Gonzo had that innate sense of knowing when something needed to be said, when you just let things roll the way they are, and uh, he had a real good feel for a lot of the things that I didn't have to do as a manager. He was such a great team leader, he was so well respected in that clubhouse that uh, he would oftentimes detect things out in that room before I did, and nip it in the bud really made my job easy. When I think of all the things that we need to do as baseball players, um, Gonzo exuded you know, the work ethic that he needed to have day in and day out when he came and stepped into the ballpark. The ballpark became Gonzo's personal playhouse in 2001. He had made some mechanical changes to his swing uh, to, to allow himself to be more of a power hitter, to get more lift in his swing, to pull the ball a little bit more, and I just think that year it all came together for him. That ball hammered the right field. Will this one stay fair? Yes, it will. Home run, Luis Gonzalez. Luis started off the season by smashing 13 home runs in the month of April, setting a National League record and matching Ken Griffey Jr.'s Major League mark. On June 8th in Kansas City, Gonzo tied a franchise record with three long balls against the Royals. Gonzalez, a fly ball to pretty deep center. Way back at the warning track, at the wall. 
He's got a three homer game, Luis Gonzalez. He's hit him left field, right field, center field. The following month, at the Midsummer Classic in Seattle, Luis was an all star once again, and he took center stage at the Home Run Derby, where he beat Barry Bonds in the semifinals and Sammy Sosa in the final round. Boy, you put on quite a performance today, and uh, you're the new champion, and you made everybody here very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Gonzo continued his torrid pace during the second half of the season. And that zone was just so, uh, so infectious, and everyone around him was able to just, you know, get on his coattail and, and ride it along with him. For the season, Luis posted a 325 batting average, swatted a franchise record 57 home runs, and had 142 RBIs. Gonzo finished third in the voting for the National League's most valuable player. Just having one of those years where he was seeing the ball well, he was getting pitches to hit, and he wasn't missing them. I never witnessed a better season than, uh, than Gonzo's 01 season. Not only all the home runs, but the big hits. We're tied here in the 11th. Led by Gonzo's monster year, the Diamondbacks won their second division crown in 2001 and then beat the St. Louis Cardinals and Atlanta Braves to reach the World Series, where they would face the New York Yankees. There were so many moments that took place in that series coming after 9-11 and the emphasis on what was happening in our country and the concerns we all had and to be a part of a World Series that included New York where 9-11 took place um, was unbelievable. The Bronx Bombers had their sights set on a fourth straight World Series title while the Diamondbacks were seeking a championship in just its fourth year of existence. Bank One Ballpark in downtown Phoenix was the site for the seventh and deciding game. The atmosphere in the ballpark was absolutely awesome. It was an electric atmosphere. Um, here we are. Who would have guessed, who would have thought that we would be in the situation we would be in? The Yankees led the Diamondbacks 2-1, to one, heading to the bottom of the ninth inning, and the game's greatest closer, Mariano Rivera, coming in to finish the game for New York. Well, the stage is set for the bottom of the ninth. The Diamondback fans on their feet. Bottom of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Diamondbacks, down two to one. The Diamondbacks were able to rally and tie the game at two when Craig Council came up to the plate. Hit by the pitch and the bases are loaded. The reason that Rivera did not put Council on was because on deck was the best Diamondback hitter in Luis Gonzalez, their most valuable player. And here he is with a chance to win the World Series for the Diamondbacks. Certainly, uh, he'd probably be the guy we would pick in that situation given the season that he'd had and the way he had risen to the occasion so many times during the regular season. It's almost, you know, divine intervention that it was Gonzo that with the opportunity. Think about it. You're a kid. From the time you're in your backyard by yourself throwing a wiffle ball up in the air, what do you always do? You have the announcer in your head. The chance of a lifetime for Luis Gonzalez. 2-2, bottom of the ninth. Game seven of the World Series. Bases loaded. Infield in, one out. Strike one. The one problem is Rivera throws inside the left-handers. The left-handers get a lot of broken bat hits in the shallow outfield. The shallow part of the outfield. That's the danger in bringing the infield in with a guy like Rivera on the mound. trying to win the World Series in Game 7 in the ninth inning. Bill is their winning run at third. All the Yankee infielders and outfielders are in. 
Gonzalez digs into the plate. It was so loud you couldn't hear yourself think. And the 0-1 delivery. And a little blooper. I paused for a second at third base to see who was who at second base, whether it was Jeter that was playing in or whether that was uh, Tony Womack. And uh, as that ball fell in, I realized uh, you know, that we just won the World Series. That ball seemed to stay in the air forever. And uh, it finally landed out in the outfield grass and, and uh, pandemonium. And I, I, I just got chill bumps thinking about it again. The crowd was so loud, it almost made your body vibrate. Uh, it's one of those moments that I will cherish forever. It was just a wonderful way to end the series, so thank you, Gonzo. This is a dream come true. You dream about this situation as a little kid, and just to get up there and put the ball in play and get the uh, winning run in, we can't believe it. This team will not give up. They had a great ball club over there, but our team was relentless. We kept coming back. Luis came back for five more seasons with the Diamondbacks before moving on to play with the Dodgers and Marlins where he wrapped up his 19-year big league career. Gonzo is a five-time All-Star and ranks at the top of almost every major offensive category in D-backs history. When Gonzo got that hit, uh, it changed the landscape in Phoenix because the city had never had a world championship. And the next year, it was all purple everywhere. And I really think that with that one hit, Gonzo changed a lot of the fans that were fans of other teams to become Diamondbacks fans and Phoenix sports fans. By all accounts, everybody that's ever been around Gonzo, anywhere he's ever played, said he's one of the best teammates ever. And I think that's probably one of the highest compliments you can pay to a major league player. He's a great teammate. He's a true professional, just the way he prepared himself every single day to go out there and play. But he also knew when it was time to kind of cut loose and keep everybody nice and loose in the dugout. He had fun playing this game. You could see that every time he took the field. And I just loved playing with him. He was a great combination of, of what it looks like to be a pro. He's a guy that, uh, honestly, if every major leaguer was like Luis Gonzalez, uh, boy, what a game we'd have. He fit like a glove here in Arizona, a classy guy. That's the kind of guy you want representing your team. That was Gonzo. We had to be careful to not take advantage of him because he'd never say no. Here he comes. <laughs> Luis Gonzalez is a guy that uh, always has time for his family. He always has time for his teammates, his friends, uh, his fans. He's got a lot of fans. The mayor, uh, he seemed like to be the mayor of every town. He was always outgoing, uh, talked to everyone, and everybody loved talking to him. He's part of the brand. And in such a short amount of time, our history, since our inception only in 1998, we already have a rich history. We have a lot of great players that come to mind, but uh, first and foremost is Luis Gonzalez, and that's why number 20 was retired before any other number. He's an unbelievably selfless guy who cares about his fans and cares about his community. When you think of Arizona Diamondbacks, you think of Luis Gonzalez.